Hi, oh, day and welcome to Farming Live Australia. Today is Sunday and normally we I try to have a day off, or we both do, but didn't work out that way today. This morning we're starting our round of cattle work, which is really completely out of step with what we'd normally do. Normally we'd be finished all our cattle work other than maybe we might have to wean a calf or spray some cows for fly or something. But normally in the wet season we don't do cattle work of any substance just any little remedial work that needs doing but nothing much but it's different this year I had a knee replacement earlier last year and it sort of put me out of action for any major work so we're right out of step with everything and we've had trouble getting the yards dry enough to do cattle work but anyway we're into it now and I'll show you what we've been doing and what we're about and how it's going Hope you enjoy this video. While I'm getting things ready, I'll just explain a little bit to you about what we're going to do to the cattle and why. Here I'm just lighting the branding fire. As well as branding, the cattle will have poron put on them, which is a substance that helps with worms and ticks and fly. And the one I'm using today I haven't used before because we change the chemical round from time to time and it's supposed to last for three months. This is a label on the bottle of stuff that we're using. It's called Tick Pro and it's primarily for ticks but it helps with other things too. Another procedure we have to do to them is inject them with bot botulism vaccine and it's a disease that they get from it chewing on old bones or if you make silage and somehow you wind up getting a rat in the silage or Anything with meat in it can give them botulism and they die from it. People can get it too. I don't think it's just cattle, but it's a real problem in cattle if you don't vaccinate for it. Well, we're finally ready and we're just shutting the gate on the forcing yard. They'll be run up the crush and then we'll start to work on them. The big gate in the forcing yard just comes around and it makes the space they've got smaller and smaller and they don't feel comfortable in such a tight space so they run up the race where there's a bit more room and then we put the sliding gate round behind them and then we've got them under control. They're all going in nicely but the trouble is the front ones won't move right up at the moment and there's not enough room for that back one so what I'll have to do is shut the gate and um, move them up and start to make room for it. Here I'm painting an orange mark on this heifer and why I'm doing that is that's because I'm going to sell her. So I know she's been processed and what we've done and we'll write it in the records as well and she's got a user ear tag number that we can refer to but that just makes it easy when I'm drafting them to see what I need to do. I normally don't do that because we're normally a lot more organised but because we're in such a schmozzle we're just doing that to make things a little bit easier. Here I'm going to give her a botulism injection. That spray bottle has got metho in it and I spray the needle and the wound site and then I'll inject her with the botulism vaccine. She doesn't like it much this cow. She's a bit touchy. This heifer's got no ear tags at all and what I'm doing here is washing her ear to get wax and stuff on them and I'm just cleaning it off with a solution of water and antiseptic because when I ear tag it's going to make a wound site and I want to make sure there's not germs on there. So this tag there is her herd user tag so that's the number she'll have while she's in my herd. When I sell her they might do something else but that's what I'll do. I refer to that number for all my cattle management and the other tag she'll have because she's getting sold is an NLIS tag. When we finish tagging them we spray iodine solution on the wound site just to try and make sure it doesn't get infected. Here I'm doing the last job on her which is applying the pour on and after this she'll be going out.
We're now on to the next lot of cattle in the race. Here's the brands in the branding fire. All going good. These sores on the cow, see around its eye, and you'll see it's got other sores on its neck down here, are the result of flies, buffalo flies. And they make the sores all over the cows. And some cows have softer skin than others and are more susceptible. And that's why we try to look after the cows and put pour on them and spray them, etc. I don't think people not in the cattle industry understand why all this has to be done. But the bottom line is if you don't do this stuff, the cattle will either die or not perform to their best ability. As the owner of the cattle, I think I have a duty of care to make sure I give them the best life I can and part of that is to try and treat them for diseases and internal parasites and ticks and all sorts of other things. This big fella here is huge. What happened was he was born with one testicle and there's no point in taking that off or doing anything with it because he'd have another one up inside more than likely. So I thought well I'll raise him up just keep him separate a bit and then I'll sell him as a bull to the meatworks. But what happened was he was a little bit, oh, he was not nasty, he wouldn't go you, but he was a bit wild. And the last time I sold bullocks he was going to go on the load. And that was the day he hit the frog and toad and we couldn't find him. He just disappeared, so I brought him over home here where I can keep an eye on him and I quieten him a fair bit by letting him come in the yards and feed with the other cattle. And he's pretty well behaved now. So he'll definitely be going to the meatworks with the next load of cattle. But if you look at me, I'm five foot nine high and he's nearly as high as me. He's a big lad. The poor on treatment is systemic, meaning it goes right throughout their system and you can't slaughter cattle for so many days after it's been applied until it's clear of their system. The cattle are back out in the paddock now and they're all happy. They've forgotten about their experience. Anyway, that's about it for this edition of Farming Live Australia. Thanks a lot for watching. We'll see you next time.